What's up, Snow Tracks Nation? Luke and AJ here, and we are here to discuss uh, a bit of sad news, though not entirely unexpected news. If you've been watching any kind of snowmobile media over the past two days, you already know. Uh, well, 24 hours for everybody 24 else. hours for everybody else, yeah. That uh, I had to hold it in. We were like, no! <laughs> Yamaha is pulling out of the snowmobile industry entirely, and according to them, for good. As of 2025. Yeah, so, so you got two more seasons worth of buying Yamaha snowmobiles, and I think we're here today to talk about the fact that, you know, some people might say, oh, well, I'm done, I'm gone. I mean, the reality is, anybody who's bought a Yamaha snowmobile knows, well, they last longer than everything else. So I know some people are thinking, let's get out of this. If you want a Yamaha sled and you got one right now and you enjoy it, Go out and order one right now. Like, get it because well, it's going to be good for the next 10 to 15 years. And at the end of the day, forever. it's an Arctic Cat. And Arctic it Cat's going to keep making those parts. So you don't have to worry about chassis parts. Plus, the word on the street is that they're, the partnership between Yamaha and Arctic Cat, as far as motors go, is going to continue on for some period of time that was never yeah. determined, but it's going to continue. So, as far as like worrying about warranty parts, maybe you can't get a blue panel. Like, yeah, but go still, get it, go get it wrapped. They have to make parts legally yeah. for I think it's ten years. So, I thought it was ten years. Ago, yeah, yeah. So uh, Yamaha dealers are still going to service Yamaha snowmobiles. Um, you're still going to get warranty, all the promised warranty that, that yep. you got when you bought your sled, including extended warranties. So yep. I don't think there's a reason necessarily to be afraid of buying a Yamaha. However, the resale value is going to drop. That it'll, is, that it'll is a change fact. Thing. Yeah, it'll change things a little bit. But I mean, the reality is if you're buying a four or five year old Yamaha, it doesn't have warranty. And everybody buys them because they last forever and because of the Yamaha motor. And I think it'll be the reason why somebody buys a Yamaha motor in an Arctic Cat as well. Because you're buying that Yamaha name. Who knows? Maybe Yamaha motors will pop up in some other brand at some point. We don't know it would be likely that a company who knows how to make snowmobile motors could potentially make it well, for somebody Well, except that you got to remember, those motors aren't snowmobile motors. Those motors never were. They were always from something else that they fit into a snowmobile. Adapted. Yeah, so... Well, except for the turbo. The turbo is specifically built for the snowmobile industry. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not like they've got this catalog of motors that drop right in. And with the chassis that are built from other companies now, they just don't fit. So unless they tool up a motor specifically for, say... Arctic Cat Catalyst, which I highly doubt that's going to happen. Yeah, maybe it not. is an interesting thing to talk about, though, what happens now with Arctic Cat. And, you know, we've talked to Mark, we've had some discussions, and I, I think with Catalyst, uh, Arctic Cat isn't going to want to keep building these older chassis forever. They're going to want to eventually don't. move away from building them. I know that They're Catalyst. Building them forever. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> um, I know that Catalyst sold out this year. They couldn't build enough. Yep. Um, everybody in knows one motor, in one motor one configuration, motor configuration. Um, everybody knows last season Arctic Cat and Yamaha had huge trouble delivering product because they couldn't build chassis enough yeah. so if you're Arctic Cat building chassis do you really want to limit the amount of catalysts you can sell yeah. because you're building an older chassis for somebody else I think my opinion is in the long run this probably isn't a horrible thing for Arctic Cat the well, other I mean, thing to consider be able to deliver more sleds to more, their buyers exactly yeah. and from an Arctic Cat business perspective, they don't have to buy motors. If they're selling catalysts with their own motor, that's the way to make the money in the industry. Sell your own motor, but sell your own chassis. With the number of people who want four strokes, I think Catalyst has to fit a four stroke at some point. Whether they're gonna build it out of, um, what is it, the, the flat, no, uh, where's their motor facility? I can't even remember the name of it right now, but um, their, their motor facility is state of the art. So are they gonna start to build a four-stroke there, they did. They, I believe they assembled the Suzuki four-stroke motor for the. Uh, uh, well, that, for the but that's the thing there. about money, so. and and in this industry is, if you want to make money, Skidoo has proven this. Yeah. You got to build your own motors. Yeah. You can't be buying motors from people and yeah. make enough money. So if Arctic Cloud, Saint Cloud, there you go. That's it. So if Arctic Cat wants to make four-strokes, I believe what you said is correct. They're going to have to fire up Saint Cloud and build a four-stroke <clears> motor for the Catalyst. Yeah. But, and um, I think they, I think they need it. We've proven that with Skidoo getting so much market share. I mean, here's the other thought. If if you're a Yamaha person right now and you absolutely do not want to stick with because you're worried about it, which I think is crazy because Yamaha and Longevity go Or come 2026. Hand, or come 2026 and you buy a sled every year, uh, where are you going to go? Well, I mean, if there's Arctic a Cat doesn't bring a four-stroke... There's then... a certain percentage of Yamaha buyers who, and it's probably a very high percentage, who buy Yamahas because they're four strokes, right? Like they're yeah. buying a four stroke snowmobile. But then there's also a percentage of Yamaha buyers who are buying it because it's a Yamaha or and a four stroke. Well, 
Maybe not though. Maybe yeah. it's a Yamaha. They're Yamaha guys through and through. They'll buy, but Yamaha doesn't sell two strokes. The other thing is there's a lot of guys out there who are buying SRXs because they're the fastest snowmobile on the market. Yeah. So are those guys who are buying Yamahas because they're Yamahas or buying SRXs because they're super fast, are they going to keep buying, are they going to switch to Skidoo or are they going to maybe look at other brands? If Arctic Cat came out with a four-stroke in the Catalyst, I think there probably would be a bunch of people because they've got comfortable with the Arctic Cat, uh, some of the parts on their snowmobile yeah. right now, and they've they've been able to come to terms with that. But I mean, there's some Yamaha folks out there who are going to buy whatever brand they do, and they're going to wrap it in a Yamaha wrap, even though it's an Arctic Cat Polaris or Skidoo. It's going to yeah. say Yamaha on it. Uh, I, I know there's people out there right now, and there's probably somebody on their couch going, If you do that, yeah. send us pictures. Yeah, yeah, we're we okay with that. Um, but... It's going to be interesting to see where they go. I mean, the sad part about this is the history, right? Like, mm -hmm. I remember Dad telling us the first time he went out and bought a, whatever it was, an SRX or something. ET340. Or ET340 and all this stuff back in the 70s. And he's talking about running through downtown cities when there was, you know, uh, the, the city closed down and it was state of emergency because there was so much snow. And he's ripping around on his Yamaha and it was the best sled he ever bought. And yeah. I mean, that was, our Yamaha first sleds was the first were both snowmobile. Yamaha snow scoots. I mean, that was really our first real yeah. snowmobile. Real well, snowmobile. and Dad's saying Yamaha was the first snowmobile that he got on and he went, oh my goodness. You know, like it was, it was reliable. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to change plugs every 15 minutes and or keep belts. a bandolier of them and change a belt every night and, you know, pull it inside. He was like, this was the first real snowmobile. So I guess you eyes. could say, sort of roundabout that the reason we are sitting here doing this it's is because actually because of the Yamaha snowmobiles in, <laughs> in a very possible in a roundabout kind of way it really yeah. is because if he had a bought snowmobiles and they were super unreliable and he hated it, he got out of it. maybe I mean he's yeah, had some not. pretty unreliable things dire. in his life that he won't give up but yeah. um, Steel chains interesting concept now let's talk about a little bit the business as a whole okay so this isn't good for the snowmobile industry it's just not yeah. less competition is always bad yeah um, We've got no, no knock to Skidoo. They deserve what they've got, but they've got like 55% market share somewhere in that neighborhood right now. Maybe more. Uh, yeah, it's depending. There. Um, so now you take Yamaha only had about nine. It's not like they yeah. were huge. But if, say, half of their customers are four-stroke buyers and go to Skidoo, let's just say 50%, which is possible, that puts... That puts Skidoo up to almost a 60% market share. We don't want this to become the watercraft industry because the watercraft That's industry right. pretty much sucks in that regard. I mean, you've got Sea-Doo and then it's like Sea-Doo and then And then other people make watercraft? Yeah. Really? Really? What, what's a jet, a jet ski? People call Sea-Doo's jet ski. Oh, that's a jet ski. It's yeah. like, no, that's a Sea-Doo, but you call it that because it's synonymous with a small watercraft Everybody and handlebars. Everybody doesn't have a clue what they're what they're riding, but yeah, yeah. I mean that that's true. We don't want that. That's a good that's... simile, actually, how the watercraft industry changed that way. As soon as BRP came in and started making sit-down watercraft. Yeah. They did it in a different way than everybody else, and all of a sudden, nobody bought anything else. And now good. they've yeah. got—I think they've got well over 80% market share. It might, oh, might even yeah, be 90% market yeah. share in the watercraft industry. And it's not that they've done anything wrong. Skidoo has done everything very, very well. I mean, Jose is an amazing president of that company. He presses everything forwards. Mm -hmm. um, he does a great job. The guy takes risks, and they pay off. Amazing person and a wild company who can do so much cool stuff. Yeah. The problem is, is that I think. Overall, um, there's a certain amount of progression that slows when one company is massive and the rest are small because they yep. really don't have to push themselves as hard. And I think that that's where we will see a detriment if anything changes too much more drastically. Well, and even Jose has said in the past that he believes competition is good and doesn't believe it would be good for the industry if Yamaha stopped selling snowmobiles. Yeah. He said that. And the cool thing is, is that we do still have four, mm, four brands. I won't say four manufacturers because we have three manufacturers and two brands. Or sorry, three manufacturers and four brands, but Lynx is a viable option and Lynx mm -hmm. is a different company. You have to always keep that in mind that yep. Lynx is not Skidoo. We meet with these people, we talk with them, we hang out with them, we ride with them. And Lynx and Skidoo are two different people. Like you, you, yep. you hang out with the Lynx guys and they are all Finnish from Robinyami, hardcore trail abuse. I mean, these guys just beat the crud out of snowmobiles. And you talk to the Skidoo guys and it's refinement and it's, you know, it's, it's precision. Well, it's a different it's group of finished. people. They're totally, yeah. totally different. And that's something to keep in mind if you are a 2026 Yamaha buyer uh, and you, you need to go somewhere else is that those two brands are very different. Mm -hmm. And we've experienced that when we go meet with Lynx, there's no Skidoo guys there. And yeah. when we go meet with Skidoo, there's no Lynx guys yeah. there. And so, their budgets are different. Totally different. Budgets companies. are different. Everything's different. Yeah. And, and truthfully, the product is super different too. Well, so. and the Lynx snowmobiles are assembled in Rovaniemi yeah. in Finland. They're not assembled in, you know, in Valcor. So 
they are, yeah, the parts, obviously, there's a lot of a It's lot not of a GM Chevy thing. It, it's, it's, it's far further apart than GM yeah. and Chevy. Yeah. So the Lynx being a different sled, handling different, riding different, being a different riding experience overall, maybe they'll grab some attention from Yamaha they buyers. Might. I just, and I was talking to dad about this like 15 minutes ago. I just see the Lynx sleds as being, in my opinion, too hardcore of a ditch bang or snowmobile for a Yamaha guy to want to go to because the Yamaha sleds are plusher, smoother riding, and more comfortable. Now, it doesn't take anything away from Lynx. You can take a Lynx through way bigger bumps, way faster than you can with a Yamaha it's not snowmobile. The, it's not what the Lynx is for. No, if they had a touring sled that was, and don't get me wrong, I'm not talking saddlebags and like, you know, uh, huge luggage. You're gonna but, get in trouble by saying that. I know, but if you had something that was a little more what is it? Comfortable, I guess, is what you would say. Like just, just more long distance. Long distance. Yeah. It would. I think that would be the guy from Yamaha who goes. Yeah, I could probably do that. Lynx. I mean, if Lynx produced like, a, like an X Terrain LE or something, or something that was like, like a... super plush and had all the features and all whatever, and a four-stroke yeah. turbo, yep. they'd probably grab a bunch of, of Yamaha customers. Yeah. But yeah, I think so. at the end of the day, we, you know, we have had for decades, a great relationship with everybody at Yamaha. And, yep. and we just want to make that very clear that They're the crew awesome. at Yamaha are really, really good people. Yep. Um, they're easy to work with. They are all passionate. enthusiasts, passionate about the sport. And this has been really hard on them. Yep. Um, there's going to be a lot of consumers, viewers of ours who are upset about this and mad sure. and how could Yamaha do this, I'm but just realize, <laughs> well, yeah, but just realize that, that the people behind the scenes on it was hard on them. North American side, I guess yeah. we could say. Uh, it you could see it in their eyes when the, when we did our conference call. They yeah. are they are hurt. Oh, and, they were choked and, up. Yeah, sad yeah. about this. So yeah. and we are too, and I'm sure many many of you are as well because I know that our story with Dad buying his first Yamaha that is such a common story for all uh, many of you as well. Um, Skidoo built the first snowmobile, but Yamaha built the first reliable snowmobile. Yeah, that's actually a really good way yeah. to put it. Yeah, and and that's that's that. Yeah, I mean, even right now, you know, you get the tinglys, and you're like, man, this sucks. But yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. And you know, the time will tell how this all plays out. Yeah. So the the timeline that they've put forward is that anybody who's purchased or put an early order on a sled for 2024, so this coming season, that's that's basically they're they're almost all built. So. Yeah. That's done. They will again sell product into 2025 in North America, though in overseas they are done in 2024 yeah. model year. So you so, only get one overseas if you bought one already. Yes, that's it. Um, if you're in North America, you have the 2025 model year, and then they are done. And it was actually pretty interesting to me in their press release because some of their facts was like like questions they knew people were going to ask. One mm -hmm. of them was, "Will Yamaha ever enter the snowmobile industry again?" And the answer to that was basically just no this is it it's done forever so um the I think, japanese are the type of people who will make a decision and go with it it's not yeah. like oh hey there's a big wave let's jump back in it's kind of like when they were done with building japanese snowmobiles in japan boom they're gone the yeah. apex is gone the vector's gone the nitro's gone all those things r&d money was moved elsewhere and that's yes. actually what they said uh in the in the conference video conference with us in the media was that what they're doing is they're pulling as a business decision only. That's what it was. Yep. It was looking at their business and saying, we're investing this much money in this product. It's making us X number of dollars. Yep. It's not making us enough. If we take that investment and we put it into other product lines, off-road product lines, so dirt yep. bikes, um, e-bikes, ATVs, side-by-sides, watercraft, other off-road products, we will get a larger return. And at the end of the day, it makes sense. you can't fault them for that because it is a business. Yeah, they're not in this to lose money. Right, and and I'm as much as you know, maybe you say, well, it's a big corporation. Maybe they could lose a few million just to stay in a business that they had so much history with. It is a business, and the people at the top rarely are. And enthusiasts. I think we saw the writing on the wall when when Articat started building their snowmobiles and they stopped building in Japan. That was kind of the first step. And at that time, we were all wondering if they were going to step back altogether. So we've had a good run with another brand building their product for them, but I think we all saw it. Coming well, I down. think what we saw and what we were waiting for, knowing the catalyst was coming, was will the catalyst fit a, a four-stroke? Four stroke? Yes. And the minute they pulled the sheets off the catalyst and there was literally no <laughs> room, none, not a millimeter of extra room to put a four-stroke in it, yeah. we all kind of sat back and went, well, there's there's the stamp. That's it. <laughs> there's your sign. <laughs> yep. Uh, because what are you going to do if you're Yamaha? And what are you going to yeah. do if you're Articat? Are you going to keep building Yamaha chassis and sell them to Yamaha? Probably not. Yeah, or, I mean, is Yamaha going to invest, you know, 
10 million dollars into a super lightweight super tiny really high output new turbo motor probably probably not, not. It's probably and it might it's not it's not 10 million it's more like yeah it's probably way more 50 than or 60 so, million so yeah. no so i don't think that's happening. yeah so well it, it's a sad day for the industry it's a sad day for us for you um yeah but it's a day that i don't think comes as a massive surprise to a lot of people who are in the industry. Yeah, if you're ingrained in the snowmobile industry, I think maybe you saw this coming. You yeah. just were waiting for the other shoe to drop. And it's and unfortunate. Hopeful. Yeah, and hopeful that it would continue going and that, you know, market share would increase. But it's it's tough with a product that wasn't evolving. And Yamaha was a little bit at our cat's mercy. And they were. It's they true. had the product that was there. They didn't really have a whole lot more. And they weren't willing to put in more for a new mm -hmm. Japanese-made chassis. Uh, so, yeah, it is what it is. We're sad. We wish it could continue. Um I'm saying don't don't cancel your 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 uh, spring check sled with mm -hmm. with uh, Yamaha, you know, and we all know the reliability of those motors. So if you're thinking about buying a Yamaha, now is the time. Go in, you know, even this coming uh, fall spring, mm -hmm. go in, talk to your dealer, get your deposit down on a 2025 because it will be the last Yamaha snowmobile that you can buy. And I think there's going to be a lot of people out there who want to buy one of those. And put it in their garage or put it up on the, the wall. Thing. You know, I mean, I if know they people, don't do some sort of commemorative, oh, they got to do yeah, they got to do a, a closeout one. You yeah, know? like I know people who have Yamaha Banshees on their walls. You know, like this is yeah. the kind of thing that that sits in that same category of epicness. So um, sad, not terribly shocked, but sad. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> Nothing you can do. Um, yeah. Anyway, we look forward to hearing your comments on this and your thoughts. We're um, still going to be testing sleds this winter from Yamaha, yeah. so look forward to that. We still got Yamaha product coming, and we'll do everything we can to work with Yamaha to bring you guys all the news and the current latest stuff, and whatever's going to be new for 2025, we'll tell you about it. Yeah.